you know, if you if anyone wanted to know um, what makes the music that we clearly both love so important, mm -hmm. um, one of the uh, sessions I really recommend is the Miles Davis group in '64 mm. playing at the Plugged Nickel. I mean, it's a huge amount of money, and I wouldn't recommend anyone buys it. But if you know someone who's got it, I would. I would just, rent it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. it's five five CDs, and mm. um, each CD is a recording of an evening across five mm. evenings. So it's you know, right. and and they play basically the same stuff every yeah. set. The same like stuff, but and this is the major but: every night the same standards are played, and yet they never sound the same. You know, they have an aura of sameness, but oh actually, my gosh. deep listening, you realize that, you know, Herbie Hancock doesn't play the same chords in that track at that time as he did yesterday yeah. or the day. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's this fantastic interplay yeah. of embrace of the uncertain. Yeah. You know, which yeah. Uh, I just love about it. And I, in a and way, also the fearlessness, the fear, no, yeah. just, just, just the fearlessness yeah. of, of, of making a mistake, like the fearlessness of, you know, improvising mm. is mm. so brave. Mm. And basically as human beings, that's what we're asked to do all the time. Yeah. And is, you know, we're, we're, we're getting more and more corporatized and more and more uh, taught how to, um, train ourselves to respond in a certain way in any circumstance with other human beings. But mm. what we really love is improvising. Mm. That's thrilling, mm. you know? I, I think there are, very few, there are very few metaphors or examples mm -hmm. that lead us into some deep insight into what we are and why we are. Yeah. And, and improv at its best for me offers one of the greatest examples of totally. who we are and what we are, you know, because, because it's, it's about affecting a kind of position vis-a-vis -vis yeah. another human being, another sentient being, which is as influenced by what they're doing as it is by just the moment that it's happening, the environment in which- it's I'm happening. on a boat. You know? <laughs> yeah, right? All these things contribute. <laughs> and I'm in my studio at home. You know? Yeah. But these, these things matter, you know, yeah. and every great improvisatory moment mm. is a kind of affirmation, if you will, of what it is to be a human being. Well, yeah. it's like a great conversation. Why is it thrilling? Mm. It's thrilling not because you're hearing yourself speak with your own thoughts that you already are familiar with. It's because somebody provoked you to think differently mm. for that, for those few minutes, our 30 minutes together, our 29, our 29 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a, there's, there's a, suddenly you're like, oh, I didn't have this thought before mm. I actually got on the line with John. Mm. Right. No, absolutely. Yeah. I, I can tell you for a fact, many of the things I've said only came to me as, exactly. as we you know, but, yeah. but, but they're all informed in some way by this desire to do justice yeah. to the durational presence of long player, you know? Like, like, total, like why didn't Miles Davis just perform solo all the time? He yeah. was Miles Davis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was a god. Yeah. He That's didn't right. because he needed them as much as they needed him, that, that relationship. Yeah. He needed and, them to know, remind him, to spark him, to prod him, to provoke him, to, to you know, to challenge him. And, and he, he always did it in the, in the same way. Every time he started a new band, Herbie Hancock to, tells his story about how mm -hmm. you're invited to his house, all the you know new yeah. band members, and you, you're playing, yeah. and yeah. you wouldn't see him, you know. Yeah. And then he'll come down after half an hour or something, listen for a bit, and go, mm -hmm. and go off again. You know, once if you take out the, yeah. the sort of underlying sense of mastery that implies. There's also something quite endearing there, which is, you know, that everyone's Human. giving, yeah, everyone's giving the room to grow into this new and relationship. That's mm. literally, ja like, just the idea that jazz musicians hand over to the bassist, to the drummer, to the, you know, saxophonist. Four, three, two, one. 
And I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I think I have Precious soon. Precious, are you with me? I am. Hello. Oh, sweet. So lovely to meet you. Scientist really? to scientist. Scientist to scientist, and uh, nice. I was list. I was listening to the end of that conversation, and I, I love jazz too. So I was, I was, I was oh, laughing dude. it all. <laughs> I have to tell you the truth, Precious. I did not love jazz or get jazz, but then I, my son is a jazz player, and he taught me. Mm. Like I made somebody, <laughs> I created a human who makes jazz, <laughs> and so he taught me something that I actually did not understand before him. He really, he really did like inform me how to see it, how to understand it, how to hear it, how to love it, you know. And so since then, it's kind of, and it's also a deeply mathematical reference, which I really mm. appreciate, you know. Mm. Mm. Well, um, well, it, well, yeah. I mean, it took me a, a long time to. Mm -hmm. to love it even though my father's a jazz musician so i grew up with jazz is he I, no I way are you from zimbabwe is I'm that what zimbabwe. i remember yes. so is he in zimbabwe as a jazz musician he's a jazz musician but he's in the uk he teaches oh, okay. music so um but um you know i grew up listening to sort of jazz and yeah and i didn't get it and i and i mm -hmm. and i went you know for the classical Mm -hmm. side of, of music and and playing oh, classical you? music that was mm -hmm. my that was my rebellion I guess um, so what I, instrument flute lovely so very elegant very light uh, I mean really not very jazz disposed instrument except you know I sort of lately mm -hmm. have become really interested in the whole concept of improvisation mm -hmm. and conversation Mm -hmm. And that you have the tools that you have, and it doesn't matter where you land. Yeah, that you know, that element of uncertainty, really. Mm -hmm. And we are, it just seemed appropriate. I've been listening to more and more. We live in an uncertain world. We've, we always have, but it feels more uncertain. Yeah, we are reminded that it's an uncertain world. You know, I'm not musically skilled at all. Like terribly. I mean, if I would have to say what would be my weakest suit. It would be, I'm, I'm extremely untalented musically, but I have like obviously the math and I have, a, I have not a bad ear. I can hear mm -hmm. stuff. I can, but I have no ability to create it. None. I, I can't hit a note. And so it's really interesting to have a son who's so musical mm -hmm. and my husband's a musician. And my hope is that I gave uh, my son a little bit of a math edge so that he can theorize about it as well mm. right it's he he's pure intuition he just plays it's just lust it's just passion and lust um but my hope is that i gave him a little bit of math mm. to kick it up so that theoretically he actually understands what he's doing <laughs> and and it's been an interesting experience it really has it's just so different such such different minds you know, we have such different minds. Um, but I think a lot of scientists have that connection, right? They're like, we're plucking out of the ether patterns and things. It's like, we feel like we're platonically discovering stuff mm -hmm. and it's like in the air, right? And there's something I think that musicians, when they pluck out a melody, and when scientists discover some mathematization or something, that it has that similar feeling of like, well, I made it up, but I also believe it's out there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I also believe it exists independent of me. And I merely found it. You know, do you ever have that feeling? I mean, you're an epidemiologist. So you're much more connected to like messy human and stuff but do you ever feel that way that it just exists oh yeah i mean it's 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 a, it's a sort of knowing yeah. that you get sometimes when you yeah you the i'm also a neuroscientist so the bits of your brain that that sort of pattern recognition that you mentioned where mm -hmm. you're taking in different uh sources of information that are yeah not necessarily related and working out the pattern and epidemiology is is part of that is you know what's going to determine whether something becomes an outbreak 
turns from an outbreak to an epidemic, to a pandemic. To a plague. And, yeah, to a plague, to a global plague. And it's, all, it's a series of coincidences yeah. that happen, which then inflate and, 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 and grow. And, and we're now living in an environment that was mm-hmm. a series of probably start over a series of, of coincidences that then that so then grew. I can't I can't not ask you about COVID. I can't not ask you about COVID. And there's so many things I want to ask you. Like if we had five hours together, um, it would be a delight. But the fact, like one of the things I want to ask you about is this is coronavirus, um, you know, COVID-19 mm-hmm. because of the year. Yeah. Um, but there are many coronaviruses out there. Mm-hmm. And even if we wrestle this one to the ground, <laughs> we have no guarantee that there isn't going to be another outbreak of a different coronavirus. That's correct. And I want to ask you about that. I want to ask you about how connected you feel it is to climate change um, and even to inequity, financial mm-hmm. inequity and, mm-hmm. and big business and, and, and uh, our prioritizing greed over ecology. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, this stuff is chilling for us now. This mm-hmm. is survival. Mm-hmm. Wow. Where do I start? I think, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but, uh, we, we could talk for hours on all those we questions. Could. But, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's called coronavirus and it's COVID-19 because of the year. Mm-hmm. Actually, if you look back, um, smallpox was a big deal because we managed to eliminate it. How many mm-hmm. viruses have we eliminated? We're still, or, you know, sort of pathogens. We're still struggling with malaria with all our technology. I know, but um, polo had a huge, huge win. Yeah. Like we yeah. totally yeah. conquered, essentially, in, unless anti-vaxxers undermine well, us, yeah, we basically yeah. conquered polo. Yeah. Polio, it's, sorry, polio, yeah, so not polio. polo. Polo's the game, yeah. polio's the disease, I don't remember. Okay. But, but the, yeah, I mean, but we haven't, elim- it's, it's not completely gone. It's not, I mean, smallpox only exists in the lab now. We managed to eradicate it, wipe wow. it off the face wow. of the earth. Right. Wow. It, it is so wow because we haven't done that for any other diseases, <laughs> really. And so, and so, um, my take really on COVID 19 is that it's going to be with us for some time. It's going to come and go in waves. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, um, you know, talking to what you're saying about social equality, it reminds mm-hmm. us our connectedness because if we leave some corner of the earth um, poor and without access to any vaccine once there's a vaccine Mm -hmm. um, viruses have their own life they evolve they Mm -hmm. you know they they move yeah and um and we and we carry them as we move as we do our economic activity etc and so we have to hold out the hand and and work together with that person who lives on the other side of the globe that's what that's what this is reminding us can i ask you what would you say to anti-vaxxers like um, affluent americans Mm. living in california in their beautiful houses (laughs) in a safe part of the world with all kinds of resources and access Mm. please Mm. tell me what to say when they decide to be anti-vaxxers because yeah. i just i mm. i just want to blow up and i would like to appeal to your you're clearly a more reasoned measured person than me <laughs> and <laughs> I, I would know. like to appeal <laughs> to your intellect and your expertise <laughs> to tell me what do i say to that well i mean one it's you know, when you vaccinate, yes, it's for yourself, but you're also being a responsible member of the community, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so when they leave themselves, you know, if you're an anti-vaxxer, you don't take your, I mean, take the measles, right? I mean, mm-hmm. Let's talk about vaccines we have. Yeah. Uh, that's exposing someone else's child. So your decision 
has repercussions on someone else. And that's- Why isn't this part of the discussion with the anti-vaxxer movement? Because most of the anti-vaxxers are actually left-leaning, well-meaning people who are ill-informed. They're, mm-hmm. they're very badly informed and they think they're doing something right and, and, you know, and peaceful and of mm-hmm. the earth. And mm-hmm. it's that science and science is bad and this is mm-hmm. nature and nature is gonna just be our immune system. Mm-hmm. And like, how do we combat that, that anti-science mentality, even among people with whom we share a lot of philosophical mm-hmm. opinions mm-hmm. and principles? Yeah, it comes down to um, human psychology as well. I mm-hmm. think, um, you know, when there's fear, there's a lot of misinformation. Yeah. And people will grasp at, um, will grasp at any explanation that somehow, uh, you know, sort of chimes with, uh, it could be some belief that they have uh, some mm-hmm. internal belief system and is not necessarily related mm-hmm. to science. And I and when mm-hmm. you when you look at the data mm-hmm. and how we used to have childhood mortality and then the measles vaccine came about and, and it shot right down. Right. That's evidence right there that right. actually <laughs> So how do you how do you convince people to think beyond sound bites and to seek evidence. I mean, I'm not actually putting that on you. I'm not actually yeah, phrasing yeah, that well, as a question. I, I, that's I, too I, big. I think, I think comment, it's too I big. That, I couldn't answer it. You can't <laughs> answer it. We can't answer it. It's too yeah, much. I, I think. I think. I think. I think that community um, sort of aspects and 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 talking to people. One of the, mm-hmm. you know, one of the most valuable lessons I learned when I was so fresh faced thinking I knew everything with my fancy degrees was actually mm-hmm. it's really important to 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 sit and break bread with all members of the community because they, can, they have something of value that they can share yeah. and yeah. I think even starting by having the conversations mm-hmm. um is is important and and mm-hmm. listening to people's fears and yeah and, so, and holding them and, you know, yeah. explaining. So, speak, so speaking of fears, <laughs> I was really interested in um, the apps that you were developing and the research you were doing about trying to get some patch um, to, to more rural communities um, mm-hmm. Uh, with with medical access that weren't necessarily a whole hospital. It's not a whole hospital. Yeah. It's not it's not it's not a whole staff of doctors, but it's it's some access. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that came up because I'm in a very techie field and I work around mm-hmm. a lot of like computationally sophisticated people, it was a mm-hmm. an objection that some of these web companies, you know, some of these these big conglomerates, the big Silicon Valley stuff. Mm-hmm they don't have our best interests in heart all the time. Mm-hmm. And, and if you are a good meaning person who's going out to try to make a, um, try to build a, a, a new app to give people access mm-hmm. to something as decent as healthcare as essential, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but you're having to, to, to sidle up to big companies who's, appropriation of the data is it's just unclear what they're doing with it Mm -hmm. and do you worry about that bringing that into Africa do you worry about Africa becoming like we have here just giving up all their data all their information all of their sort of control do you worry about that of course I I, of course I do that's why I think it's really important that um, you know people people like me and and others uh, Mm -hmm. are saying we want to to work and find solutions that are appropriate yeah. for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and, 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 and to come from the, you know, to come from the perspective of we're building for our communities. I, it comes back to the connectedness, right? It's not mm-hmm. about extracting, it's about we exist, therefore we must contribute something. You know, we're using air, we're using resources. We can't just be there just to take, what do we, you know, what do we give back? Mm-hmm. And, 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 and coming from that perspective where we say, you know, I feel, I feel strongly about this, actually, that you mm-hmm. build, building, 
uh, developing a business that actually is intrinsically valuable to the community that you're serving. And so, mm-hmm. you know, I, I saw a gap from years of working, um, you know, in the field as an epidemiologist mm-hmm. in public health, that mm-hmm. you know, people with diabetes and hypertension, for example, yeah. were ignored because it's not an infectious disease. It didn't have that same uh, urgency, same urgency, mm-hmm. and yeah. it wasn't measured. Yeah. But but yeah. I could, I, you know, I had family, friends, and I could see that people were affected. Yeah. Um, and and I, and 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 now we know that actually back to COVID is that if yeah. you have those conditions, you're more likely to get severe COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, so are you thinking about- It doesn't about, surprise me. No, right? Because it's just, it's it's like you're teetering on a precipice waiting mm-hmm. for a push or something. Yeah, yeah. So, so in terms of COVID, are you thinking about how to develop your technology, your your model for um, for providing greater access in Africa, and and in rural rural parts specifically, mm-hmm. um, like how does the, how is COVID prompting you to 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 what's next? I mean, how does that change your direction? Um, well, it's opening up. So we started really initially just focusing on diabetes and hypertension. So we said whoever needs access, because for months people haven't been able to travel. Um, and even mm-hmm. now it started opening up, they're still afraid to go into mm-hmm. clinics. Mm-hmm. And so what we're seeing is that actually yeah. you're going to have the indirect effects of COVID, not just being ill from COVID, but being ill right. because of COVID, because well, or, you're not or, accessing or, the healthcare. Or, or being hungry. Yeah, yeah. Or being, I mean, it's or, just yeah. crazy what the, the fallout has been. Yeah. Like so many people are, are going to be hungry. They're going to be hungry. Um, and it comes back to should we be thinking about, you know, a universal um, sort of basic yeah. um, salary for people? Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's what how... about like contact tracing? Do you think about that? So the contact tracing apps, the mm-hmm. suggestions of having, you know, um, an automatic contact tracing app is seems like what a great idea and then we'll narrow in and well but it also it's a form of surveillance yeah inevitably oh, and 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 ultimately um i mean a friend of mine was talking to me i'm, I'm basically stealing all my friends ideas right now and saying them mm-hmm. back to you because we, no, we were we were we were interested in your work and we were looking yeah. into it together yeah. and um and and yeah there's there's a real anxiety amongst especially people who are very technically and computationally and, and you know, uh, in terms of computer technology, very sophisticated that, that contact tracing is just a, a nice word for surveillance. Mm-hmm. And do you worry about it? So of course, that's, I mean, you, that's why it needs to be handled appropriately. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we have to remember that it's, 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 it's people and, and, and we have to, I keep talking about community because it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's us and how we see how our actions impact on others. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, I fear that we, we rely, I've come, so I'm a techie, I'm a scientist and, 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 I, and I do love efficiencies and automation mm-hmm. brings efficiencies, right? Mm-hmm. But we can never take away the need, actually, for contact and communication with another human being. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, in the sense that it's going to take so long. From an evolutionary perspective, that need has been there for much longer than technology is just, it's not even a blink, right? I mean, you're, you're, I mean, yeah, you're the astrophysicist, so uh, it's, it's, it's not even a blip. I mean, how I like record- very long time scales. Yeah, yeah, this is this is incomparably small. Yeah, this, and so um, it's it's about a millionth of the time scale I'm used to. So yeah, so so this, you know, so this blip mm-hmm. um, where we're saying uh, connectivity uh, and mm-hmm. and and people being tracked. 
Yeah. But do you worry think, about it? I don't it think it's going to last. I don't think you don't? I don't think. I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't think so. So you I don't. Think never, like, because also in part of what's really obviously important about your work is that you're going into regions where there's less, um, you know, there's less structure. There's mm -hmm. less infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And the whole point of going there is because of that and to try to offer people a bridge to some better care. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, those same places are vulnerable to bad governments <laughs> by definition. Mm -hmm. And um, and so if you have a situation where all of their data can be gleaned and also the government controls the companies that are there, like it's just, it just becomes fraught, right? And worrisome. And I just wonder how much of what you, what you're doing is, is, you know, you have to defend against that or you have to build in protections because here are these people you really want to help. Mm. And then you, and then you expose their data to like an unstable government and then they're vulnerable. Mm. And so it's, it's a really just seems to me like a super complicated and ambitious mm. goal, you know, and, and yeah. worthy and valuable, but super <laughs> complicated. It is, it is complicated and really difficult, but the most mm -hmm. interesting questions, as you know, mm -hmm. which you, I mean, you're working on really complicated stuff. That, well, those are the I most like, interesting problems, the complicated ones, because oh, yeah. if you're, naughty, if you, uh, you know, you're trying to unpick it and figure out yeah. uh, you know, I, that path. Yeah, I often say if I'm not confused, I'm not I'm not working on the right problem. Yeah. Yeah. If I am not driven to the point of madness, <laughs> I have undershot. <laughs> if I can solve it, then I'm not where I should be. You know, I need to be like in drowning waters, <laughs> neck deep <laughs> and grasping and struggling because that's when you learn and you make discoveries. Um, but every scientist should basically be pushing themselves to the limit. That's that's sort of yeah. what it means to be a scientist. Yeah. yeah, and it means that actually you're always in an uncomfortable space, right? Always because... <laughs> in an uncomfortable space. Every little bit of progress unlocks the next you know, thing you don't, you don't get <laughs> the next thing you don't have any idea what you're even looking at yeah yeah, yeah exactly um, and you and it is really uncomfortable i was talking to a very good friend of mine um a professor as well who is like my kids can't stand the discomfort the discomfort he was really surprised, you know, because they were brilliant kids, they're super talented, they're doing great, they're awesome. But like we jam ourselves in a position until we're so intensely uncomfortable, we can't stop thinking about anything else. Yeah, yeah. And that's all you're thinking about. And you just have to fix it because your own like well-being is on the line. Because yeah. until you resolve it, yeah, you're not going to, your shoulders are going to be like up to here. <laughs> You're like ten. You feel you, yeah. You feel like your your very existence is tied. Oh, you're not irritable. <laughs> you know, and then and then there's like that moment that, mm. and then the next thing you do is you run and make yourself uncomfortable again. Yeah, well, because <laughs> I think you know that combination of the discomfort and then when you yeah. figure it out that that opening. Yeah, it's such a an amazing feeling. So amazing so amazing and so and also we, the excitement to share it with everybody yeah to like run around town telling yeah. everybody yeah yeah and so you 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 want to sort of relive that and and yeah. and, and i think it, it yeah. comes back to that reward mechanism our brains yeah will you know we want a bit more of that and so and so we work on Can another I, naughty problem totally and that's true that's true and we you know we like that dopamine hit and you're the neuroscientist, so. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you about working in the UK versus working in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, have you, 
like, does it feel different to you, those systems? I mean, obviously the systems are totally different, but as a scientist, do you feel that the, the promise of science transfers? What's the promise of science is that it's true for me, it's true for you. It's mm. true in Andromeda. Mm. It's true mm. in 7,000 years. One yeah. plus one is going to be two in yeah. 7,000 years yeah. Yeah. in Andromeda. Yeah. And it was true in Bangladesh. And it was true, mm. like, and do you, do you, you're like, because you're socially engaged, like mm. I'm not socially engaged, right? My mm. stuff's totally abstract. Do you feel that promise of science? I do. That it's true for all of us? I do. I, I, um, I think it's true. I think, mm -hmm. I think that the difference is it's the, perhaps the opportunity. So the funding opportunities are obviously, for uh, sure. are obviously different, mm -hmm. but, but you know, the, but the core truths. Spark, oh yeah. The core truths and the search for the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's what mm -hmm. science is, is the search for the truth. Mm -hmm. um and that dedication to the search for the truth mm -hmm. uh i can I've, I've connected with you i can land anywhere i i meet yeah. another scientist there's a connection yeah. because we know it's a search right. for the truth right. so um there's a there's a trust that the other person isn't bringing a lot of false baggage right there's a trust that the person's speaking to you as plainly as they can yeah, with right. the information that they with have. With the information right? that they have, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. you know, being mindful that that mm -hmm. can change, and then sure, that flexibility totally. as of well, isn't it? It's yeah. the honesty, though. It's it's the honesty, right? That like science. The whole premise of science is confronting reality. So you can't be a dishonest scientist. It's a it's a it, that's an oxymoron. That's, you can't. That's I not mean, a thing. If I mean, you're you dishonest, you're not a scientist. And and of course. It's, it's all in the interpretation. Yeah. If anyone tells you that the scientists all agreed, you know it can't be true because people can have a different interpretation. Right, and everybody data. should be like, oh, that's an interesting challenge. I'll try to answer your question. You know, yes. if I can't right now, mm. I'm gonna go back and think about it, genuinely. Like, it's not, so I run a series at Pioneer Works where I, um, Pioneer Works is a place in Brooklyn, which is a d dedicated to arts and sciences and, mm -hmm. and exploration. And um, it's called Scientific Controversies. And one of the premises is that it was really funny. I had to really com convince people that it's not a debate. I kept trying to say it's not a debate. No decent scientist is debating. They're not saying this is my thesis and mm -hmm. I'm going to defend it at all mm -hmm. costs. No, that no, is that's so not unscientific. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you can be like, I really think this, but in the first two minutes, you better be really fast and able to say, oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And then think about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you can't shed your prejudice and your belief and you're the thing you want to be true in a second, then you're not behaving scientifically. Yeah. And so it was really interesting for me to explain to people that scientific controversies isn't a debate. It's an airing of thoughts and people should 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 give up their prejudices as fast as possible you know it should be the opposite of a debate it should be yeah. like you convince me would be great yeah but in the meantime i'm going to try to convince I mean, you absolutely <laughs> <laughs> and and like what which I, everybody at the end of the day should be like we're still confused or we that's agree okay. and yeah. that's okay it's that's okay, okay. To be confused and it's, and it's, it's okay, okay. Yeah. That's the discomfort you were talking about. That's the discomfort. And and that's where people mm -hmm. think science equals certainty. And it does and that's not. That's where I think politicians get it wrong. Indeed. Science is actually quite the opposite. If you're certain you're not being a scientist, you're being an archivist, which is a wonderful occupation as well. Yeah. But, you know, if you're being a scientist, you're basically always uncomfortable. <laughs> and, and 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 okay to live in that uncomfortable space because that uncomfortable yeah. space i think is where we can create new possibilities because where there's where there's certainty yeah. and it's still there isn't yeah. an opportunity to to move things yeah right yeah. so that's where that's where i enjoy the discomfort and absolutely I'm, and we're down to 10 seconds precious you are well Hello. named you are well named 
Well, China is been somebody really... gave you a very uh, like the you know they had the insight to know that that's who you should be, precious. <laughs> well, it's been such a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Till soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.